How's it going guys? Chris back here again with some more Historic Brawl. Uh, today I wanted to check out a powerful white commander. Um, and it wasn't at all because my quest said that that was the right direction to go. So I decided to play Saphira. I think it's Saphira. No, I don't know. I'll read her name when she comes up because it's a little hard to pronounce. Uh, and I don't think it really is, but I'm just missing the pronunciation. She's a 7-7 angel that gives creatures with flying indestructible, and you can cap four creatures and pay one white mana to cast her as an alternate casting cost. So we are built around her. We have a bunch of pathetic flyers in our deck, and we're trying to cast them as quick as possible. That's the plan. Eh, we'll keep. Show up against Tulane, Teller of Tales. Um, probably a bad matchup. So, um, White Flyers are not the best creatures. But I needed a lot of them, so Silverback Griffin made the deck. Um, so did Loyal Pegasus. So if I draw a two drop, next turn we can get to the four creatures we need. Didn't happen. Gonna go with Elite Spellbinder. Yovis card draw, we don't want card draw. Here comes Tulane. Thanks to Oketra's monument. We just get her out now. Like, if they remove her, we still have our board of damage. We will definitely be out racing Tulane. And then Smothering Ty should put a lockdown on um, his silliness. So we can use our treasures to pump Resplendent Angel, otherwise we don't have much of a purpose for him. We have two cards in hand. Like, our game plan is to win next turn. That is all we can do. Are we going to overrun? Because 7 damage ain't going to do it. Bye Tulane, Teller of Tales. I will tell your tale. Honestly, bragging about winning against a Tulane deck, it's kind of, kind of fair. Because Tulane can get a little bit out of control sometimes. Like, he's not the most broken command. Mm, he's not the most broken commander on uh, MTGA. I'm pretty sure there's at least a few others that um, can be considered more broken. Like, Golos immediately comes to mind. He has access to all five colors, has an ability that allows you to cast up to three spells for free, and pays half of his commander attacks upon entry. Uh, I kind of want something a little lower. Okay, I got this card before. I guess we'll keep it, but I don't really want to. Grateful Apparition. 
a proliferate card. Uh, I don't think we'll use it, but I have a few counters in the deck that could be useful. We've shut down the Crucible. Crucible of Worlds, by the way. Um, I do remember that maybe not everybody knows what Crucible is. Get up to a 5-4, huh? For 4 mana. With an insane ability attached to him. Okay, Wizards. Sounds completely fair. Um, no block. So Grateful Apparition next turn will get us to Saphira. And hopefully we can, um, Swords. The most dangerous threat that they have this turn. Like, if they go for Angelic Ignition again, I think it'll be worth it to, um... Yeah, I guess not. Deal three damage. I don't know what they're doing with Brunar. Like, Brunar wants art, uh, wants equipment. Brunar. Do it. I want to see it. Yeah, what a wise choice. Uh, yeah, we still have to get rid of Brunar. Take twelve. Go back up to uh, sixteen. So we can, um, we can just block with our indestructible creature if things get... If it's not too bad. If not, we'll sack the hand executioner and just exile it.
Lyra gives our Zephyr an extra power. Ten minutes in, we are two game wins. It's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. Because um, Historic Brawl tends to be a slower format, so you don't generally get five minute games. Unless you just get trashed to the point where um, it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, it's pretty good. Sphere's actually pretty good, too. I knew she was a decent commander because I have, I've played this game from the other side of the table. Like, I've sat down for a historic brawl game, and my opponent has played four flyers, cast a seven-mana creature, and um, from there it's just... It's just almost too much to uh, overcome. Like, she's a bit of an... She has, like, a bit of an Abyssin effect, but only for your flying creatures, where you remove Saphira, but it's still going to be lethal next turn because... Um, because the flyers still survive whatever removal you're doing. So if you Wrath, they'll survive. If you use Target Removal, uh, you'll need to have another... You'll need to have a Wrath afterward to get rid of the creatures. I'm going to free mulligan this too high up the curve. There we go. So we got Angel on one. Uh, Proctor on two. Meek on three. There are like three creatures in the deck that um, don't have flying, and that's because they're just really good uh, for our flying strategy. Mentor the Meek's one of them because most of the flyers we're using in the early game are so low to the ground that um, Mentor will help us draw cards off of them. Alluring Vampire is also in the deck. Um, I guess Proctor was a problem for him. Our deck does run uh, a bit of a reanimation, though, so. Um, about sacrificing this to play Jetmere, I think. They don't have a green source. And they need at least one green source to play uh, Ginny Fay. Could have gone Mentor the Meek or Welcoming Vampire here. I'm afraid that um, yeah, I'm afraid that they might have had something that would have been backbreaking. But I guess they're just gonna scoop to a uh, Strict Proctor, which I don't blame them. Strict Proctors are the worst <laughs> in real life and in game. That's our three games for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Another more one coming up tomorrow. Bye for now.